Okay, so uh, I'm just to going to log into the system. Okay, so yesterday we had a discussion about the purchase requisition, how to create a purchase requisition. Okay, so you need to be understand one thing when there is a purchase requisition, purchase orders, or it may be master data, any kind of things. Okay, any of the data which you created, okay, it will be storing in the one table. Okay, that means in the database level, the system will be uh, putting into the some column and row basis and it is storing into the one table. Okay, so you also need to be remember these tables because when you planning to do some customization screens or customization programs or maybe you are planning to do some restrictions on the current screen, then these tables are very, very important. Okay, so these, these, these are the called database tables. Okay, so DB tables, you can say DB table, database table. Okay. So every process, every process having the multiple tables. So that you need to remember. So yesterday we discussed about the purchase requisition, right? So it will be storing into the one header table and one item table. Okay. So what are the what are the tables it is? Okay. So one table it is like we bad. Okay. So this purchase requisition, if you want to see. The information you can see in the purchase uh, eban table. Okay, so how how you, you can see these tables and all? You must be enter the SC sixteen n transaction code. This is the transaction code. Okay, this is the transaction code to see the table information. Okay, so what it is there? What information it is there in the table? Whatever you entered in the PR screen. That means you entered a PO, you entered the material number, you entered the uh, description, you entered the unit of measure, you entered the plant, or there all the information it will be storing into the table level in the format of table table and uh, table format. Like okay, it looks like a like okay, so it will be like uh, this format. Okay, so let's see how we can see that. Okay, so as I said that you can go to SC sixty nine. Okay, SC sixty nine. Then enter. Then you need to be entered the table name. What is that? My table name, eBan table. Okay. So eBan will be representing that purchase requisition. Okay. So if you have the purchase requisition number, you can enter the purchase requisition number or when you created and who created. Okay. So you can search in the different, different ways. Okay. So you can see I'm just created this PR number. Okay. So what is my ID number? So I can see the my ID number here 703044. So I'm just entering 70, 70, 30, Okay. And when it will be like yesterday, it, it was created, right? It will be created yesterday and right. So I can enter that. Okay. My date here. Then I can exit. So I can see that. Okay. Okay. So this is the change done. Okay. I can see the creation date if it is there. Process creation indicator change done. Okay, let's see. We just execute this one. Okay. If, okay. So you can see here. Okay. So the purchase requisition numbers here. Okay. Then okay, there will be like delivery date, requisition date. You can enter the requisition date also. You created yesterday, right? So might be you can enter the requisition date in the uh, here. Where is the date? Requisition date. Okay. You can enter the requisition update and execute. Then you can see that what purchase requisitions you have created yesterday that you can display here. You can see this is the two purchase requisitions which is created and who created my user ID which I created. Okay, okay, today's okay. Maybe someone they changed the my PR number. That's why it is taking last changed by who changed. It. That's why it's not displaying. Okay, the material number which I created with the 100 two items I created, right? I can see the same PR number, but two different items are there. Okay, so then material group and store location, plant, quantity. Okay, so 
like you can see all the information what you enter that information is storing in the table level in the column and row basis okay so what is the use of this one it is one thing is st storing purpose okay so it will be storing into the database level the second thing is tomorrow if you want to see that your data it is very easy you can see the data what created and when it is created and who created all this information you can easily see okay clear okay and these tables based on the, these tables only the technical team okay they will design the uh, any custom reports or any uh, custom restrictions baddies or anything which they, have, they will do in the screen if they want to be do some restriction and all based on this data only they can pull out that okay so this is the we called as a database table other than this one okay we also have the standard reports okay so what is the standard reports standard reports is nothing but like okay, if i want to see like last one year what is the create what are the created purchase requisition or last one month what uh, how many purchase requisitions which is created or i want to see that open purchase requisition list or i want to see that open purchase orders list so these reports will give you help on the to display the the report what it is created who created all this information you can see so now you can ask me the question sir what is the difference between a report and database table so database table is nothing but like a it is the technical purpose it is storing in the database level and the reporting is for the user purpose when they want to see that they can see in the report purpose they cannot see in the table level they don't have the access to see the data okay they can only have the access to see the reports okay clear so what is the report what we can do in the uh, reports okay if you could see that i'm just going with the uh, some fme fa something which i go to there you can see that okay display list of the display purchase equation here also i can see okay what purchase equation which i created yesterday okay when it is created who created that, that and all everything i can see here okay so if i just from i'm I just planning to go to see that what it is there okay so i want what i'm planning that i'll just go here and i'm just entering that the same information which i entered in the database table level same information i'm also entering here okay so who created this one 703044 703044 okay then i can also filter that my uh, release date or it may be delivery date if you have to remember that or requisition date you can have that date that also you can enter then you can execute then it will be displayed at uh, the classical way it will be displaying that okay this is the report so by click on the each and the pr number i can see i can go and i can see that the, what is the purchase equation it is created so this is the users level report user can see this report okay so again output we can change uh, how how you want to be designed like uh, based on the scope of list they can design and they can uh so the report in the classical report ilv report they can see okay okay so that is called standard report so every process having the one standard reports and database tables okay so you need to be remember this also when you are planning to uh, learning the all this process clear any questions no i'm good okay so, okay then let's go with the uh, creation of the next process okay so i have created a purchase equation okay you can see me 5a which is your uh, representing that the purchase requisition list you can see okay display list so there are, there are so many reports are there you can remember that uh, maybe you can go here you can see or maybe if you not remember the transaction code what you can go you can go back and has uh, given yesterday the part like uh, logistics material management purchasing and purchase requisition there you can see the list of displays and you can see here the list of all these things okay you can see this is the me five year okay so by part also you can go or directly you can go transaction so these are all reports it is 
clear so this is the way you can find the reports and this, these are the tables you must be remembered okay eban and ekkn those you need to be remembered but if you want to see reports and if you want to see transaction codes you can go with the path clear okay now uh, i just created the pr yesterday okay purchase requisition which i created now this purchase requisition can be created as a rfq so how many ways you can create the following document one is i can create po okay and i can create rfq okay or i can create a contract as well okay so what is this actually so po when i can create contracts when i can create rfqs when i can create okay if you know the vendor okay if you know vendor okay then you can directly create the purchase order and you can raise the order based on your requirement you can directly create the po right because you already know the vendor so i don't need to be find anything so i i don't need to be write any rfqs and all quotations and the comparison because my regular vendor fixed vendor it is already available in the my system or in my company so in that case i can directly create a po okay if i don't know if i, if I don't know vendor unknown okay so then what so you don't know vendors then you are searching for the vendors then yeah, okay you have the n number of vendors in the your locality then you might you need to be find that okay once one vendor from this so then i will be going for the process of bidding right so i can I, i'll just request for the quotations and uh, maintaining the quotation then i will be price comparison then i'll be finding the finally vendor selected correct okay so if i don't know vendor then i have i have to go with the rfq if i know the vendor then i can create directly pu okay and the contracts if you want to be go with the long term agreements okay long term agreements if you want to go then you can go with the contracts okay so i hope you are aware about that what is the difference between the pu and contract to silence silent means you you didn't understand or you any questions what is the difference between pu and contract sorry i know the difference between pu and contract okay what is the difference uh, pu is for one time requirement or uh, uh, more financial legal terms are not there but in contract oh. everything is agreed between uh, vendor and the purchasing team ha huh. so, so uh, it, it is simply like a po is the one time your requirement you are processing one one time order and uh, contract it is not too much like it's a long term like you are planning for the next one year two years six months eight, 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 eight months like that no legally uh, agreed terms and conditions in the contract huh. yeah it, it depends again whether it depends on the client whether they want to be go with uh, agreements uh, In that agreement also they will be uh, finding that what is the uh, payment terms what is the in court terms and all so it is common everywhere but the concept it is like pivo having the in the single one single time you are contracting and contract is like a, it's a long term which is planning for the next one year clear so both have the financial impacts and both have the uh, agreements and all even both are the legal documents okay clear yes okay yeah so simply if you want to say that if i just went to res resorts okay so I, i just booked for the one day okay that is for the on that day which is single recommend okay i just say that okay next one year i'm planning to come and i'm just going with that this is the one agreement so whenever you are just coming that you just book for this room so like i'm just planning for the long term so it's kind of the one year planning okay clear okay so now this purchase requisition can be created as a po rfq or contract okay so hope you understand that rfq when you are planning to create or po when you are creating the po right 
So that's clear, right? RFQ versus PO. When you are creating PO, when you are creating RFQ, that's clear, right? Right? Okay. Now, now let's say vendor unknown. Okay. So if I don't know the vendor who is my vendor, okay, then what I can do? The purchase request I'm converting to the RFQ. Okay. So what is the meaning of RFQ? Request for quotation. Okay. So that means my company requesting to the vendors to provide a quotation. So I'm just sending this information to multiple vendors. This this quotations I'm just sending to the multiple vendors to get the bidding. Okay. So it's kind of a bidding concept. So how we can create that into the our system? Okay. SCP system. What the transaction code is. The transaction code is okay. Me forty one. To create the RFQ, request for quotation to create that RFQ. So what information it is required here? You must be know about that. What are the vendors are there? Multiple vendors. Okay. Then the second information is when you are planning RFQ deadline. You must be entered that RFQ deadline. Why it is required RFQ deadline? Because if you see that in the purchase request, and my requirement is maybe if it is on 28 or 29 if it is a 28 or 29 okay if i didn't give that uh, deadline they keep on sending that next next one year also they are sending that okay this is my price information this is the price information okay so there is no use right after this deadline after my delivery date or requirement if i getting that that information there is no use after it right so i'm just planning that okay there must be deadline so what I'm what I can give suppose it is 19 today, so I can give two days time. Okay, by 21st to the July 2023. I am expecting that. I'm expecting that the uh, quotations from vendor. Okay, after that we are closing the dispute. Okay. So we'll be selecting based on our select our whatever we receive the quotation, then we are comparing, then we are finalizing. So RFQ deadline also it is very important. Okay. And you can also track that okay, tracking number. Okay, you can put like tracking number when you are sending the multiple vendors. Maybe if I just having that uh, uh, 500 vendors. Okay, so the RFQ number one, okay, RFQ number one, which having the 500 vendors are there. So what will be happen? 500 uh, vendors they are sending the quotation. Okay. So I, might be I have the multiple requirements, right? So in that case, so I will be confusing that what requirement it is like. So what I can do? I just comparing the both. Okay. I'm just comparing the by based on the tracking number. Okay. I'm just uh, using the tracking number to finding that this vendor we sent this is the RFQ number. So this is the this is the Recommend for the pro recommend A or recommend B or recommend C. So, like you can just identify. So, you can track with the track number. Okay, you can give the tracking number. So, these are the information which is required when you create the RFQ other than other than PR information. Because based on the purchase request only, you are converting to the RFQ, right? So, in the RF, in the PR information already, I have all this information, right? I have all this information I have. Right. So other this other than this information, other than PR information, I need who to whom you are planning to send this RFQ and what is the deadline and what is the tracking number. Okay. So these are the important. Clear? Any questions here? No. Okay. Then I will be go to create the RFQ. So I have the PR number. This is the PR number. Okay, purchase request number item 10 and purchase request number item 20. Okay, so I'll be going to ME, 50, ME 41. Okay, so ME 41 is the transaction code to create the RFQ. Okay, so here also it is segregating that uh, the type of the RFQ which is like bidding. Okay, so we can create if the client is asking, requesting that in the different, different. Uh, RFQs they are planning to create different types of the RFQs, then you can create your document type. Okay. Then language you can select and RFQ deadline you can select. So today is 18, 
uh, 18, right? So then you can mention that it is 2021 20, like that. You can mention this is the sorry, sorry, this is the RFQ date, not quotation deadline date. So you can enter that we are today date. Then RFQ deadline date. Uh, RFQ deadline date is 20. So by before 28, I'm just expecting that all the my quotation. Okay, clear. Okay, now I'm just creating the with reference to the purchase request. So I have the purchase request number here. So I'm selecting the purchase request number, reference to the purchase request number. Okay, then what item number it is like? Okay, which item number you are planning to do? This material or this material? So you need to be entered that item number here. First item, I'm, I'm planning to go with the first item. Okay, so other information if you need, you can enter. Then you can select. Okay, then you must be entered the purchase requisition. Okay, and the groups, purchasing group, then you need to be select here. Okay, then you can enter the collector number, the tracking number you can enter, any collector number you can enter. So I'm just putting like uh, for understanding purpose, PR, like I'll just put like uh, um, what I can put, PR, the requirement and uh, for A063, A063, yeah. This tracking number or this collecting number, we have to enter manually. Ah, this is the collector number is nothing but like a, I'm, I'm sending this RFQ details to the multiple vendors, no? Hmm. Okay, so might be I have the multiple RFQs or two, hmm. right? Multiple requirements. So I can just putting that one collector number. So so that uh, by based on this collector number, I can find that how many vendors to whom I, need, I send this RFQs and to whom they responded, uh, the vendors who responded, the vendors who not responded, that, e that information I can easily identify. So this number is unique for uh, all vendors or it will be different? No, it is a unique number. Yeah. That's what it is, it is unique number. It's kind of the identity, okay? For this requirement, for this, uh, for this, uh, for this uh, requirement, this is the identity number, okay? Clear? Yeah. Oh. No, not yet. But then uh, that PR uh, or RFQ number will be different. Ha, RFQ numbers are different, no? Okay. For each vendor, different RFQ numbers will be created. Okay, got it. Huh? Because RFQ is why it is creating because the vendor A, vendor B, vendor C, vendor D, if I am sending, if the same RFQ number, then I cannot maintain tomorrow the price for the price information yeah. from the each vendor, right? So the RFQ number will be different. Okay, clear? Okay, this is the collector number for the identification. Okay, okay, then, then, so what I just entered the PR number, the item numbers, and all it will be display here. PR number, item number. Okay, then this is the material number, and this is the short text, and this is the plan, store location, the quantity, how much you ordered, in the PR number, all this information which is capturing now. Okay, now, yes, this is the what I just want to adapt. So I just adapting these details. Okay, clear. What you then uh, adopting this requirement? Okay, I'll just go. I will just go back again. I'm just go to ME forty one. Okay, okay. I just entered the my quotation deadline. Okay, then I just taken reference of PR number because I have the purchase request number. Yes. Okay, I'm just create a purchase request number. So this is the item number which I have. Mm -hmm. Right, so which mm -hmm. I have ten. Then first item I'm just going to do. Then I will just select that. Okay. Then I just entered the collector number for the identity number. Then enter. Then uh, this information which is showing from purchase requisition. Then I'm just selecting and ad ad adapting all this information. Basically, you're select adopting and selecting that information. Yeah. So as of now, I just selected. That's all. Okay. okay. The information which I selected. Then I'm just clicking on the arrow mark. Then you can see that. Okay. This is the PR number. This is the the information of the material number, this is information of the quantity, how much it is required, and the, when you are planning to get the stock and the store location, all this information, it is there. If you want to write any text and all, you can write here. Okay, PR text. And you just click on the PR text, you can see that if anything which you want to be maintained, that you can maintain text. Okay? Any maybe okay. conditions you can write, any note you want to be write. Okay, this you is can for write. us or this is for vendor? Huh, this information we are sending to the inform vendor, right? 
with this text information ha uh, this text information we are sending to the vendor see okay. suppose okay so uh, caution okay i'm just putting like caution okay like, yeah make sure make sure the product should be should be quality uh, should be iso okay like that i can just mention that okay so the quality inspection related like oh, you have the iso mark and all so that you can mention the text okay clear if you want to maintain a long text also you can maintain here you can write that long text and all okay clear okay so this is the just information to the vendor clear okay now now i'm just want to see that all the information so there is just multiple options are there header information and you can have the vendor address number and you can see the partners you can see the release if you have the approvals then you can see the approvals and if you want to generate the messages output you can generate output so like every information it is there okay so you can see all this information when you require clear okay now i'm just going to the header information let's see what information is there header information so let, let's see the, the header information you can see company code purchasing organization the group buyer groups and when it is rfq date which is created and what is the item interval and what is the collector number and what is the language you are not audible friend or maybe okay their their reference means their understanding purpose is like our reference for our understanding purpose we can write is it audible hello yes now audible but okay yeah. okay it's disconnected suddenly power i think there is some interruption either Okay. okay. I'll just go to ME forty one. Then I'm just selecting that deadline, and I'm just selecting purchase organization who is the buy group and the RFQ. Then enter the PR number and item number. Then collect the number. Okay. Then add up the information. Then you can see that okay, these are the information like uh, deadline and all. Then you can see select this one, and you can go to header information. You can see this information here. Okay, the salesperson people telephone numbers, and if you have the, any ident number from your side and their side, that you can see. Okay, and then you can go back. Okay, then you can see that item item information. If you go to item overview, then it will come the item overview. Now. What is my planning? I'm just sending the multiple vendors, so I can select here the vendor, okay, vendor address. So just select the vendor address, okay, then enter the vendor number. Or so you must be have the vendors list, right? So must be have the vendor list that vendors you are planning. Suppose I have the vendor. Uh, suppose that thousand vendor is there, okay, two thousand vendor is there, hundred vendor is there, like one vendor is there, like that. Different different vendors are there, okay. So you are planning to send this rfq to the multiple vendors okay so if you want to see that list of the all the vendors okay you can go to this report mkvz you can see the list of the all the vendors from the mkvz okay so if you want to see that mkvz is the report to see the vendors which is created which is created under this purchasing under purchasing organization Okay, so here my purchasing organization is thousand. Okay, then I can enter the thousand purchasing organization and enter the zero. Then you, you can also uh, you can also based on the account group also you can select domestic vendors, import vendors, service vendors, financial vendors like that you can select. Okay, so you can select what what kind of vendor it is like you can select that. Okay, so you can see here these are the all vendors which is created under this. Thousand purchasing organization. Okay, vendor to under fifteen, vendor hundred, like that. You can have that to different different vendors. Okay, so you might be can send that. To, okay, might be if we have the information like uh, okay, such term. Okay, like he is supplying the milk always. Then I can put like milk. 
okay so when you creating the vendor master record you can also mention mention that system the system will be help, helping to that finding that the suitable vendors okay so in this case the caching suppose there is a caching are there the caching material is there so if you have the system has a caching then you can easily find it okay but the master master record should be created with that system you can see here the systems you can see here okay this is electro okay like pume auto like automobiles like you can search like okay usually you can filter that clear okay now i'm just first i'm just going with the two when the two let's see whether okay i can send this information to okay okay two i'm just selecting the two then enter then it will be capturing that all the electronic component distributor okay he is the person who is distributing the electronic okay then i just saving this one okay then once you created this one the system will be creating that rfq number so this rfq number is represent that this is the for two this is for two this rfq number which is created for vendor two but then it, it's not going to the vendor it, it will go to vendor too. I will, I will just show you one minute. Huh. Okay. Okay. So it will be go to the vendor. So how it will go to the vendor and all. Okay. So there must be. If you if I go to change mode, okay, because I already created the one RFQ number. I'm just going to change. Okay. Then I can go to RFQ numbers enter. Then there will be a messages are there. Here you can see that there is a messages are there. Print out. Okay. So here you need to be select that what kind of the output you are generating. Okay, what how you are medium like you are planning to send the printout, you are sending to the fax, you are sending to telex, you are sending the to mails, okay, special functions, anything which is there that you can generate. Okay. Email, email uh, is okay or fax is okay, but how about printout? Then it will be manual process, no? Huh, it is a manual process, right? You are sending the hard copy to the vendor. Right. So you are sending the couriers, right? There is a there is a functionality after sending the courier also, right? Mm -hmm. So earlier, now you have the fax and telex. Earlier, how it is like they are sending on the post postal codes, right? They are to the they are sending this information to multiple vendors, pro postals, printouts, or maybe you can convert to PDF and you can send the mail to also, right? So there are multiple options SAP which is provided. Okay. So again, that is depends on the client how they are proceeding that. Whether you are they are sending with a mail or they are sending physically hard copy. So like they are okay. So it depends on the client again. Okay, clear. Okay. So now I'm just selecting like this one and I just maintaining that if I had a printer, printer information I can give and I can generate that printer. Okay. Clear. So here. Here they are, they are entering the printer printer device device number. What is the device connectivity? If you have the device, then it will be connected to this device. Okay. So this device and uh, device creation connectivity connectivity all it will be done by base system. Okay. You the email option, then it will directly go to his email account, right? Ha, it so, will be go to mail account. So uh, that uh, that also base system have to be allowed the access to send the print out. Which I just discussed yesterday, right? If you remember that SYST, there is a output and input we are sending, right? If you see that yesterday we discussed about this one, right? Okay, so here they can see that these are all which is just stuck in here, the QOC. So the mails, they selected the medium like by mail. So that's why it is stuck here. So once the basis team, if they are allowing to the send this information, then it will be go to the outside of the SAP. Okay. Clear? Yes. Okay. So it depends. So it depends what you selected medium and you can proceed further. Okay. Once you enter the, all the information, then you can, what you can do, you can generate the printout. Okay. Now I have the, let's go to ME4F. Me lesson ME9 
nine year. Okay, it's nine year. Okay, so you can go to message output here. You can see different kind of applications here. So one application is for the purchase request and RFQ, purchase orders, all this information is there here. You can select that whether you're planning to process for the RFQ, or planning for the process for the purchase orders like that. So different different applications again different different um, transaction codes are there. Here RFQ it is like a mean nine year. So you can just uh, execute that. Okay. So then you can take the print. You have entered slash n. And then you entered ME uh, 9A. So ME this is, 9 of, 9 of, ME 9F is the transaction code. Yeah. So this is because of you are on uh, not the easy access uh, window. Uh -huh, yeah. So ME 9A is the transaction code. Okay. Otherwise, it would be ME 9A, right? Uh, it is the ME 9A. Why I entered the slash N and slash O? Because I'm in the other screen. So I need to be come out and again go to that screen. It will be take time, right? So I can have the shortcut like slash and I mean I need then what it will be happen. It will be come out and it will be go to that screen. If I go to slash four I mean I need then the existing screen will not be closed, but other screen will it will be open. I think the first class which we discussed this one. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. So that's what we can do uh, generating that. Okay. Now where we are in now I'm just planning to send one one more RFQ to the different vendor. So what, what the next one is 15. So one five. I'm just entering the 15. Okay. He is the, from the different vendors. So you can choose that whether they want to be sent with this language or this language. Okay. Because the language vendor is the Germany and you are creating in the English language, whether you want to be sent in the in, with this language or different language, you can choose that. Okay. Then you can save. But then it will convert. Uh, it will be convert. It will be convert, and it will be sending that information. While generating the output, it will be coming under the German language. Yes. Clear? Yes. Okay. So it is created as the next PO, the next RFQ number which is created with a six nine. Okay, which is for fifteen, vendor fifteen. Right. Then now 100. Now I'll be going to the 100 and selecting that. Let's see this vendor also is the different language. Okay, you can select select that which vendor, which language and all. You can select and you can send. Okay, then save. Okay, then it will be created 70. So then it is a 70, 70 for 100. So what we did has of no. What we did has of no. We have sent RFQ to different different vendors. Huh, yeah. So what is the RFQ? Request for quotation. Okay. What is the meaning of that? We are asking, uh, we have a requirement and we don't have our vendor, uh, finalized vendor. So we are looking for a vendor who can provide us the uh, good as per our requirement. Yes, exactly. So we are, we are sending this information to the multiple vendors. We are requesting them to provide their pricing information and other information so that I can see the biddings and all and I can compare that. Okay, I can select the, first, the best vendor who can supply that. Right? Yes. Okay, so I can also see that the other information might be here. Okay, so in RFQs, like you can see the information. Okay, so here you can see that uh, header information and uh, all the information like uh, when RFQ deadlines and collector numbers and all. This collector number will be the same for the all the, all the RFQ number. So why we enter the collector number because to track identity of the this requirement i can easily get this information right so tomorrow when i'm just comparing the all the vendors I, I, okay i just need to be entered the rfq numbers multiple rfq numbers so instead of i'm 500 rfq numbers if i enter them manually instead of that i can go with the collector number 
So if I enter the collector number, the system will search that, okay, under these collector numbers, what are the RFQ numbers which is created, it will be comparing. Right? Any questions here? No. Okay. So what information you can expect from the vendor? One, price information. Okay. That means base information. That means gross price information you can find. And you can also find the freight information, freight charges, if they have any freight charges, extra charges are there. Okay. Or labor charges are there, anything labor charges. Okay. Then maybe, okay, payment terms. Okay. Sorry. Delivery date. Huh, de delivery, yeah, delivery date anyway, based on that only they're agreeing, right? Yeah. Because we strictly say that we need on this date. Okay. So other than that, you can also find that, okay, uh, payment terms. Okay, payment terms and inco terms. So what is the meaning of the payment terms and inco terms? Payment terms is nothing but like, a. so the vendor is saying that within the 15 days of your paid, then I will be giving that a 3% discount. Okay, cash discount. Okay, if you paid within the 25 25 days, okay, then I can give that one percentage discount. Okay, if it is a 30 days, it is a due, due date. So that means within the 30 days, you have to be paid. So due net to, you have to be paid. Okay, so like there is a conditions, right? For each vendor have the different different conditions, right? That also, that also I can get it here. Okay, payment term. Okay, that information also I can collect that. The other than this information, I can collect the inco term. What is the meaning of the inco terms? Free on board. Okay. Free on board, free delivery. Okay. Delivery on cash on deliveries. Okay. So it's like inco terms is completely like it's uh, related to transportation, freight, to onboarding, all this in uh, respect to that information will be there. But there is a difference between freight charges and inco terms. So inco terms is related to insurance. Ah, correct. Yeah. If we are mentioning that free on board here in co term, that means their mm -hmm. responsibility. It is like a vendor's responsibility. They are the transportation, everything, they are responsible. Okay. It is a like condition, one condition. Here I'm just mentioning that the pricing elements, what information can be there. But here I'm just putting like it is a condition as per the agreement. Whether it's free on board or it may be insurance, it is there, freight, it is there. Okay. Okay. So all this chargeable again, extra chargeable, all this information, it will be there in the encoder. It is a condition, like okay, clear. Okay, so based on this inco terms and payment terms only, the above pricing elements will be calculated. Correct, no? Okay, these are the just I'm just pricing elements only, but these are the rules and regulations, like conditions, like agreements, like okay, they said this is the condition, rules and regulations, like that. Okay, clear. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes, Shaila. No, nothing. I'm saying I'm good. Okay. Okay. So now, once I created the RFQ number, okay. Once I create the RFQ number, I just send to the multiple vendors. Now you can see here, okay. When I just go to ME42, okay, to generate the output and all, what you need to do? It's already processed. Okay. Somewhere it is already open. Okay. Okay, so if I just go to here, okay, let's go to RFQ chain, okay, then you must be checked that uh, this information here, okay, the output information. So this will be coming automatically sometime, okay, or maybe you can enter the manually also. So how this will come automatically if you did the automatic output determination process, okay. So there is the out output determination process is there, okay. If you map this in output determination process, then this output types and uh, the medium and uh, logical systems and the com com community connectivity, all these things will be connected. Okay, clear? So it will come automatically. But here they're not map this output determination. That's why it is not showing. Then you can enter that or what you planned. Okay, that you can, pl what you plan that you can enter here. Okay, clear? Is that clear? Okay. 
so you can like put all these things okay pricing for quotations and everything then there is a one more selection also it is there in the here for that data okay so here whether you are generating automatically or you are planning to generate manually okay that means if you selected four send immediately what will be happen when it the rfq was created immediately it will be go to output that means it is generating the printers it will be generating the printouts from the the printer device okay if i selected the own transaction then i have to go manually to me9a then i have to generate clear okay so it is not necessary every time you should go me9a it depends again the selection what you selected here clear okay so if i i'm just selecting here the third option okay no, uh, sorry ramendra can, can you okay. repeat that one more time okay okay so there is a further data in this further data i have the option like i can choose the own transaction that means for to generate the output i'm going to separate transaction go and i'm manually generating the output okay if it is a selected send immediately when you created rfq that system automatically running and it is generating the output okay so what is the difference here when you selected the third option send with application with own transaction that means you need to do manually output you need to be generate the output manually to go this transaction code until if you not going this transaction code it is not generated you will not get any printouts okay if you select a fourth option what will be happen once the rfq which is created you don't need to go me 9a it will be already generated the printout clear yeah okay so now i'm just selecting the trod okay earlier it is selected four that's why i cannot able to see now i'm just selecting the trod okay then i will be saving this one okay then i can go to the transaction code me 9a okay so there i can go to rfq number i can generate the output okay so i can do all the information i can generate that now i can see that the entry which is there what is the output type message type and what is who is the vendor and all this information it is there then you can select that and you can see that message output message okay so the output message if you see that that the message is generated it is going to printer you can see the message also here display message okay so this is rfq number this is the rfq number date and who is the contact person and company and the person who is responsible person the delivery address quotation deadline delivery date all this information will become so this is a standard format but still your company is going with a customization printout then you can go with that printer also maybe that uh, output design also if they if you, that output design sorry sir how to change this output design that output device again design and all will be designed by abap team technical team okay you need to be give that the format and how they want and the logo the printer and the what information it is required what header information it is required what is the naming of top all this information if you give in to the if you are given to the technical team they are creating the code okay they are designing that code in the smart forms okay we have the separate transaction code from the above side this is above related okay they will be go to smart forms so there is a transaction code there they will be designing that the printer and all okay they can design the how you need the design they will design okay you can see like this in the part top it is getting that idea logo and sender information page information building information like that it will become okay so that design they can do clear so based on that first page how what page it is logo the sender information and the second page next page what information is coming all this information they will do clear yes okay so this is the smart form remember this design uh, you have you have created no no I, I, no no i didn't create it technical team created a paper sorry what you have shown is a template only ha this template 
somebody they they designed ideas the standard which is sap which is provided to display for education purpose they are display like uh, how we can design the format and all they are showing here okay what if i to change something in rfq you can change you know well, you can change and you can generate again output and you can send that information okay so i'm there is the me 42 right change you can go me 42 and you can change and you can generate okay, okay. clear yes. okay so now I, I can able to generate so whether it is generated output or not because i just generated from my end in the me 9 year till me 9 year it is my transaction code right but from basis team they will check that the spool request okay sp01 this is the basis related not from our end okay what they can do they can ch check that whether it is generated to output or not okay so if it is not generated then they will be generating from here okay you can see the script it is same okay so what they will do they will be selecting and they will sending to the printer printer ID. okay then it will be go to the printer directly it will be go to the printer output request created okay so that is again basis team requirement okay if, if suppose in the future the client is saying that i generated but you can you can able to see that it is generated from my transaction code but still the printout which is not getting then you need to go to sp01 check that whether it is generated or not generated to the output okay if it is not generated or if it is already processed then that those those everything you need to be checked with the base system why it is not generating whether this device is connected with this SAP system because outside there are so many printers out there i have the hp printer is there i have the okay other printers also it is there so how the system knows that this is my printer so we have to be set up that that setup will be done by basis two. okay so they will be generating the spools here is that clear so next time when i'm just executing this one okay so it is waiting the status so you can see the status of this one okay it is still not processed still it is in the under process only okay clear okay so yes. this, this is the spool request sp01 sp01 so what is the purpose of the sp01 to see the output generated or not output executed you can say executed or not to printer printer device clear and me 9 a is processed from my end process from mmt okay the p uh, the rfq output generate okay so i just generated from my end to get the output that is connected to sp01 the spool request will be created and it will be executing to the generating the printout any questions okay so this is the way i just created the rfq right so then what is the next step once i created the rfq i just send the information to the this vendor this vendor in this vendor okay so then what is the next step collecting the codes collecting the quotations right so you are getting the information from the vendors the quotation information with along with the what information it is there they're sending the information what information they're sending they're sending the price information they're sending the payment terms information they're sending that to in quote terms information okay all this information they are sending okay so you can also reject that in case of your in future okay the rfq which is not if suppose this vendor is not suitable and uh, okay and you are planning to reject this vendor okay you can also do the quotation rejector rejection okay you can also do the quotation rejection you can also do the reminder okay suppose you you didn't get any acknowledgement you are sending one more reminder to them okay so that also you can send clear so this is the new output and this is the quotation rejection and this is the reminder okay so when you are rejecting the quotation when suppose if the quotation was not selected 
if the if out of three vendors one vendor is selected the other two vendors are not selected you can reject it clear clear okay okay then we'll we'll connect tomorrow for the uh, yeah any questions yes okay last tomorrow okay we'll connect tomorrow then okay okay then thank you thank you very much yeah